around. You know, that's, that's how the world is. They got to carry their God around. But thank God for Jesus. He's a God that will carry us around, be in our lives, and bring us through whatever we have to go through, and help us from whatever situation we're in. I tell you, I can't thank him enough for his goodness and his mercy. Let's give him a hand clap. Let's give him some Praise God. Brother Arnold, would you open us up with a word of prayer? Yes. Lord God, thank you for, for having us gather tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you're so mindful of us, and Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you that you do, you are God that carries us around, Lord, because Lord, we, we, we don't have direction on what to do or, or how to think or even do anything without you in our lives, Lord, because we'll just, when we do, we mess up, blunder, fall down, and, and just make a mess. But Lord, I thank you. Lord, when you carry us, you will know, come to pass in our lives, and we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for keeping us, Lord, protecting us, Lord. Lord, uh, 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 protecting us, our loved ones, Lord. Lord, thank you for your many benefits, Lord. Every day you give us notice of your benefits, and we just praise you. Like you, your word says, says what it does, it does what it says. Lord, we just thank you that your word will stand forever. We thank you for, for healing us, our minds and our bodies, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being so mindful of us. Lord, and again, we thank, you. we thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus, to die, to be the perfect sacrifice, Lord, the perfect sacrifice for us, that, Lord, you can be satisfied and we can have life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can't thank you enough, Lord, that he died for us. It is such, so important. And, Lord, we can't thank you enough for it. Thank you for your, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the word that's getting ready to come forth tonight. Bless the word, that, bless the speaker to speak the words, Lord, and bless the hearers to hear the words. And Lord, and let your blessing and your anointing come in this place and do what only it can do through the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everyone say amen. 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 And we're going to open up for any songs, any testimonies, any praises. Please feel free. Praise the Lord, Brother Kevin, I have a testimony. Go right ahead, Kevin. All right. Oh, thank you. Oh, bless your name. Oh, thank you. 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 Uh, thank you, 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 uh, I want to realize that you're so dependable. Mm -hmm. uh, Charity, always showing up, always proving himself, always being faithful. He is who he says he is. He is exactly who he says he is. I don't care what they call I don't care what the lies that they tell him. I don't care what none of that. He is who he says he is. He can do all of what he says he can do. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is loving. Jesus is calm. No man can they love for him because he came to get us. That's how much he loves us. That he came to give us to do away, to do away with the lies, all the lies that they told on us. And that he could touch them and handle them and see how amazing he is. Not just like with the 64 elders get to see and with the children get to see. Now we get to see it in our lives how amazing Jesus is. Because every day you show me something amazing. 
through the word, through the who, through the spirit, through somebody else that he uses in my life, the doors that he opens, the doors that he closed. My trust in him now, that everything he gives me, I give it back to him now, because he's the strong man. I am not the strong man. Jesus is the strong man. So I learn now, when he gives me stuff, I give it back to him, for him to hold it, because I can't hold it. I have trust for him to hold it, and for him to teach me what to do with it, so that the thief can't come and take it anymore. Nothing that he gives me. So for the last two years, I've been able to keep everything that Jesus has given me because I have trusted in him because he's a strong man and he's faithful and I trust him. And I agree with him now more than I've ever agreed with Jesus in my life. And boy, it's so smooth. And it gets you past a lot of things when you agree with him. When you don't agree with him, you stand that instant well when you don't agree with Jesus. And he's not going to wrestle with you to get off the hands of him. It's up to you to make a choice. It's all about names. And the enemy will turn you to the world because you come back, there was nothing else for us to do. And I just thank God for Jesus for coming and saving us and bringing truth into the world. And His Spirit, I thank God for your spirit, Jesus, and your power living in our lives. Getting us past the thing, getting past all of the obstacles. Anything that the devil comes up against us, I just thank him for that. I just thank him for the truth. God bless you all. I love you all, and I miss you all. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So I put me in the freedom you died for, and now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. As your 
glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name.
in their situation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because his truth can bring them into his ways, the way he is, and most important, into his life. And once that life is starting to manifest in your life, you will become a partaker of some peace, love, and joy that is not accessible in any way, any shape, any form on this planet, but in Christ Jesus. And you know what? You'll have a praise for him, a thanksgiving for him, a joy for him, that will be exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask to think. It's nothing like serving the Lord Amen. and coming into Amen. His very presence. Amen. I tell you, I just want to thank Him for being so merciful to all of us. And, and, and just being a... I tell you, I can't thank Him enough. I have a testimony I just want to go into and just tell you a little bit about because, you know, you know, he, he something else that, that Brother Kevin has said, you know, he, he makes it he makes everything so different. You know, when you start to learn, just 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 be patient. Just wait on him. Just let him lead you and let him have his way. Don't get caught up in everything going on around you. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago it was, it was said something mentioned about the deeds to, to the church and everything to the body of Christ. And I hadn't thought about it at all, you know, since Pastor passed, you know, since Pastor went on to be with the Lord. So, you know, I mean, you know, all of a sudden, you know, something about the deeds. The deeds what, what about the deeds? The deeds have been inside the drawer for 40 years. And I thought they were still in the drawer where they were. They used to do Brother Will's taxes for, I don't four of them, all the way back 40 years ago. And also those other things in when Brother Tyrone went on to be with the Lord, he, after I came back, he took me right down to the bank and, uh, uh, you, know, you know, basically made me the treasurer. That's what he did. And then, you know, of course, when he passed away, I became the president and the pastor, you know, because he would, he would get two people and I don't I, I can't forget it. I, I don't mention it much, but he would stand two people up. That would be me and Brother Garrick. And said, you know, basically these are the leaders of you know, God. And, and one thing I know, Brother Will was a prophet. Brother Will heard from God. And Brother Will ministered to get the word of God with power. You know, and that's very difficult to find. And he would do that just about every other service. And uh, he used to make me feel uncomfortable personally because, you know, I, I just never had any desires for that. You know, I, I'm brother, brother Richard nailed it. He said, I'm an introverted guy. Lord, he showed him, I'm just about me. You know, I'm not concerned about other people. Not that I don't dislike anybody. I help anybody I can, even when I was, before I got saved, but I'm, I'm just about myself, you know, I'd rather just be by myself, you know, and not deal with a whole lot of people. Because when you usually deal with a lot of people, it's a whole lot of confusion. You know, everybody got their own aspirations and their own beliefs and how they feel and what they say and what they think. And then you got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But anyway, uh, so and then it was mentioned about the, the, the seal. Where was the seal at? And, um, you know, I, I didn't really think that much about it. I started looking a little bit for it, and I didn't see anything. But then it was so strange because one day when we were sitting in the office, myself and Stephanie, I pulled out the drawer, and there was the seal. <laughs> I said, what well, is the seal? We, we got the seal. You know, but what made me start thinking about this a lot more was just last week, I got a call and somebody, it was, it was a realtor saying if you are interested, first it was a realtor saying, you know, give this call a number and uh, they called twice during the week. Give this call a number if you're interested in selling the property. 
And then I started thinking, oh, somebody got that deed. And they tried. And, and you know, I don't think nobody in the church would do that. That's stealing. I mean, you know, the only people that have any attachment to it is the board. You know, because the church is, it is a corporation. So it's an entity itself, but it's controlled by a board. And the board is just really three people. And a couple of other people want it and everything. But they're the only people that can do it, and they have to be in agreement to do it. You know. And uh, but I do know that people got ways of doing stuff, and somebody took it and put it somewhere, somebody else got it, or somebody went to somebody to get something else, they could erase, they got ways of erasing stuff and doing all kinds of stuff and, and, and causing a lot of problems. So it started getting on my mind a little bit a couple of weeks ago. I said, well, maybe, you know, I, I had given, I had given a, a lawyer a call about it and see if they could go ahead and search, every, search, search to get copies of it, just so I would have copies because I'm not going to sell this church. This church is not going to be sold while I'm living, you know, because this church, this body of Christ, has something that very few body of Christ have. It can lead you really into the kingdom of God, into a relationship with Jesus that most other churches can't do. They just don't. They just they just, have, they just haven't been ministered into it. You know, they haven't been preached into it. Brother Will did that. Brother Tyrone did that. They gave us the message. And if you sought the Lord and kept after it, you will grow into it. But salvation is a growing situation with Jesus. You have to die to the things of the flesh that you can live by the things of the spirit. And, you know, it's it's, it's something that, that only God can do. And when it's done, it's, it's the most beautiful thing that can happen in your life. Well, anyway, I had also called a, a lawyer to take care of this. And she seemed so uninterested in it and everything. And I really didn't feel like hunting it out and things like that. So I, I really didn't pursue it at all. But then I got this call, these two calls, and they started talking about selling the church. You know, it was property for sale. And I get a lot of calls for the house I grew up in and the little piece of property I bought for my children. I get them all the time. I get them all in the mail, but I never get a call for this church. And that kind of concerned me. And last week, I went, and it really kind of got on me a little bit, and I said, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to go down to City Hall, which I don't want to do, because the mayor that made these people go to work, I called down there so I could find out what I needed to do to show them it's going to be a little bit out of the way because it is a corporation. And also, there's two buildings involved, this building and the building before. Um, I think this. I think the building next door was purchased in '81, and I'm not sure when this one was built, was purchased. But anyway, I called down there to find out some information. I asked them, you know, where the deeds and the records uh, connect me to them. So they gave me a phone number, and guess what? The phone number was at, was out of service. <laughs> Couldn't get through. So now I got to go down down the city hall, which I'm dreading. I'm saying, oh, I gotta go down there. I know don't nobody wanna work. They're gonna be aggravated. I gotta find out. It's gonna be a couple trips. And you know, my mind just taking over all this extra stuff I gotta do now. And I'm just saying to myself, man, I really don't feel like this. You know, and then you gotta ask somebody to look at all this stuff and it's gonna be a problem. And then um, you know, I was just laying there and everything, thinking about it. And I had taken all of the, the records of the corporation, you know, every year they send you a book that you can update, you know, who's, you know, uh, the board and all that kind of stuff. And I was looking at, and I had brought all that, taken all that to the house, because I didn't know something else was going to disappear, you know. And then I was laying on the bed, and I was going to, last week, and I was saying I was going to go ahead on, and, you know, Monday go down there, Tuesday go down there, and start the process. The Spirit just hit me and just said, get up. I got up and go look at the thing, go look at the books. You know, it's about 20 of them. I reached down and I picked up one 
that was in there. And I opened the weapon, laid down, and opened it up. And there were both the deeds. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I know why you want to kill this flesh. Because it just goes all on its own way. And, you know, it, it got a whole bunch of stories to tell you. And it's just all, all out of the way. And, you know, said in your patience you possess your soul. I'm glad I didn't accuse nobody. I'm glad I didn't just go and go off with, you know, because, you know, people do that. Do that all the time. You know, vent and just talk about all the stuff going on and I, you know, and, 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 and thinking that is someone's fault. Somebody did something when ain't nobody do nothing. It was all, it was all the stuff was right in there, you know, the whole time. But you know, it's just a, you know, I, I love Jesus because he will teach you. He teaches you a life. It's always, every day I get a lesson about what not to do, how not to act, what is his spirit, what's not his spirit. And you know, I was, that was one I, I thank God for because, you know, he said, hold your peace Amen. and let the Lord fight your battles. You know, and it's, it's hard to do that because we, I know if the Tyrone preached one time, we know how to handle our business. We know how to deal with the world because we lived in it so long and we know how to defend ourselves, no matter how it might be. But God is much better defense than any of us can be. And I just thank God because I tell you, you know, I really didn't feel like going down there messing with them people, you know, because they got like three or four different attitudes and nobody wants to do anything. And besides that, it wasn't nothing done anyway. You know, everything was in order. Everything was where it was for 40 some years, you know. But we never thought of it until it was mentioned about, you know, the deeds. But, you know, God got everything in control. And that's the one that we're going to learn to trust and believe in. And let him work it out. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's just have a word of prayer before we go into the ministry. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Amen. thank and praise you for all your goodness and mercy and your great grace, Lord. We thank you for being in our lives, Lord. And we ask that you might move according to your spirit. Recover us in your blood, Lord. And hide us behind the cross, Lord. And help us through each and everything that we might be going through. We thank you for loving us, Lord, and keeping us, Lord, and watching over us, Lord. And bringing us through all the different situations that we all have to live through, Lord. We lift and praise your name and give you all the glory and honor and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you might feed us your word with power, that you might strengthen us, that we might be obedient to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 The title of this message is Mortify the Deeds of the Body. We want to go to Romans 8, 13. And to mortify something means to make it obsolete, to reduce in strength or force, weaken, decay, or die. And I believe that Jesus wants us to die to the things of the flesh, that we might live by the things of his spirit. So let's go to Romans 8, chapter 13th verse. And it says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You know, the Lord has come into our lives and made a way that we can be born again. Be born of His Spirit and grow in His Spirit and be delivered by his spirit and be in the world but not of this world Amen. let's go to John 12th chapter praise the Lord and I want to go to John 12th chapter 20th verse and there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast the same came therefore to Philip which was at Bethsaida of Galilee and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. <laughs> Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him my father will honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Before this cause I came unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people therefore that stood by and heard it said it was it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And when he made that sacrifice and he gave up the ghost and went and obeyed the Lord, the Father, and was the perfect sacrifice that would satisfy the wrath and anger of God with all mankind. And what God wrote when he raised Jesus from the dead and gave us all access to the throne of grace and into an, a more abundant life, a life that he, where he would come in and be the strong man and bless us and deliver us and deliver us from the one that was stronger than us and caused us so much pain and suffering and bring us into a relationship with one that could first give us the Holy Ghost that we might have the gifts of the Spirit and also the faith and the trust in Him and all the wisdom and understanding that He would bring by leading and guiding us into His truth. And then coming into Christ Jesus where Jesus Himself will manifest Himself in our lives and start to show us the things that he wants to individually bring us into and the things he wants to deliver us from and help us through. And I want to go to Revelation's third chapter. And um, I want to go to Revelation's third chapter where the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to a church, a church of something in Sardis, where he is describing some of the things that he wants to bring this body of Christ into and the things that he wants to make them aware of. And that's Revelation 3rd chapter, first verse. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All these things God has made available to us by his Spirit and through his word, that by faith we trust and believe in them. He will start to manifest his power in our lives by delivering us from the things that hinder us and hold us back from knowing him and the power of his might. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. And 
Paul is talking to the Corinthian church and telling them about his experience in the Lord and the things that the Lord is doing in his life. This 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. I want to go to the 19th verse. And it says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. You know, if all we had was just this life that we had in the flesh, that Jesus did, was not able or did not give us the life that he has in the spirit, we would be men most beautiful. Because there's nothing but misery, misery and sadness in the flesh. No matter what kind of situation that you might look at in this world today, you will see nothing but sorrow and sadness in some way, shape, or form. But in Christ Jesus, we have the ability through him to grow into the promises that he made that can deliver us and keep us from it. Verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that sleep. For since man by man came his death, by man also came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after they that are Christ's at his coming, then cometh the end when, should, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule, all authority, and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he that put all things under his feet, but when he has said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Then Jesus is showing himself as the strong man, the one that can put all things under subjection, the one that can come into your life and put down all of the works of the flesh, bind up all of those spiritual powers that try to torment you and, and, and cause you angst and, and, and aggravate you and stir you up and bring fear to your life. Jesus, the strong man, has power over all the powers of the enemy. But you have to grow into a place of faith in him where you can rebuke those things in the name of Jesus. Trusting and believing and knowing that he has the power to do that from the things he's already done for you in your life. Else what other things, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead raise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand ye in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Jesus our Lord. I die daily. That's why he could rejoice in the Lord in whatever situation that he was in. Because he would he could see and understand the things that Jesus was putting down in his life as he was going through his daily situation. Being stoned, being 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 uh, attacked, being fought in so many different ways. But Jesus was with him and he would strengthen him and help him and give him the faith to trust and believe that God would bring him through. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7th chapter. And, you know, most people will think that Jesus will do these things by fixing everything around you. But that's not the way Jesus does things. He wants to fix in you first. Because he def the fixing of things around you, they might not be ready to be fixed yet. But you are hearing from the Lord. You know the Lord. You want to serve the Lord. You are in agreement with the Lord. You have submitted your life to the Lord. So he wants to talk to you to tell you what he wants you to do and trust in. So he wants you to die to yourself that you might live to him. And in 2 Corinthians 7, chapter, the first verse, it says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear 
of God. And God has made a way that Jesus can do that. Being the strong man, being the one that has power over all the powers of the enemy, being the one that can take doubt out of your life, that can take fear out of your life, that can take concern out of your life, that can take sorrow out of your life, that can take sadness out of your life, that can bind up all the works of the enemy, Jesus is able to do that, to give you a confidence and cleanse your conscience of all the evil and all the wrong that we were born into. Let's go into Galatians, fifth chapter, where those things are talked about. It's Galatians, the fifth chapter. And I want to go to 13th verse. For brother, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You know, the Lord will start to bless you and do things for you. And he wants you to do things for others. He wants you to be a testimony for his glory of what he can do in the lives of those that trust and believe in him. The peace he can bring, the love he can bring, the joy he can bring. Verse 14, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. And that's what you see the world doing all the time, destroying each other, fighting among each other. Not necessarily physically, mentally, spiritually, warring. And then you got these powers making these people act up and act out all of the time. And if you get caught up in it, guess what? You will lose the things that the Lord has given you. And, and you will be caught up in all of the different confusions and all of the different sorrow and sadness that the world is, is caught up in. Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You keep listening, trusting, believing, letting the Lord lead and guide you and let him and his word be the dictating factor in your life. You know, letting him hold that tongue, and letting him calm down that carnal mind that be racing and going all these different places that it don't belong. And then letting him bring you into the spirit. Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. The flesh wants what it wants, it desires. It has its own built-in desires. And the spirit has his own built-in desires. And they are at each other, trying to get you to, to go with them. But you want to stay with Jesus and let him lead and guide you and put down and die to the things of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You can't have no peace, you can't have no love, you can't be kind, you can't be gentle, you, 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 you're not having any of the things that Jesus said would be in his personality, his ways. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. For now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and by the grace of God, most of us, by the grace of God, are delivered physically from those things. But you know, the Lord 